Speedrunning is super cool, and Devil May Cry is no stranger to super awesome speedruns. I love the current speedruns that exist for Devil May Cry 3, but I really wanted to try to make my own category that does some things that I thought would be fun. This led to the creation of a new speedrunning category called Cake. Collect all, kill everything. For this speedrun, I'll be collecting all the blur fragments and fighting all of the bosses. This is including all of the secret missions and the additional jester fights. The name was inspired by a Ghost Runner speedrun category of the same name, where you collect all of the collectibles and literally kill every enemy. That game has an in-game kill counter and no enemies respawn. But in Devil May Cry 3, there are a few rooms with infinitely respawning enemies. So I took the name, but relegated it to all bosses. With the groundwork laid out, I decided to do a few runs and see how much fun it would really be. Man, this game is fun. I forgot how fun this game is. The first two missions were exactly the same. We pound our way through tons of enemies by using Royal Guard. Mission three is where things start to get a little bit different. I have to do all of the secret missions in this speed run, and there are 12 of them total. The first one is on mission three. I just have to kill all the enemies in under a minute. This is cake for a speedrunner adept at Royal Guard. After this, we have to break this statue called a Combat Adjudicator. They require you to get a certain style meter ranking to be able to break them. This adds a unique challenge to the speedrun. Having to figure out what the fastest combinations of attacks is to get a, a, a B rank? Okay, well yeah, the first few are a bit, tad bit easy. But I swear, later they get much, much harder. I speedrun lots of games. Currently we're doing my first ever, the first ever speedrun of Devil May Cry 3, uh, Cake, which is collect all, kill everything. Unfortunately, that means that I gotta do this combat adjudicator. One eternity later. Not fun. Come on. Nice, okay, not terrible. One big change from a normal speedrun is that we have to collect all the blue orb fragments in the environment. Because of that, we can't do a skip called Gigazip. This skip has us doing a gold release off of a platform and flying through this wall, skipping the rest of mission four. This also skips the boss Gigapede. You can't do this in Cake because you need the blue orb fragment and you have to kill Gigapede. Because of this, we kill many more enemies and just end up getting Royal Guard level two before Agni and Rudra, allowing for some sick air guards and air releases. Mission seven is one of the hardest in the run because of the sheer amount of jump canceling that is required. But in Cake, it's hard for an entirely different reason. The secret mission on this level is one that requires you to stay in the air for 20 seconds straight. This one is the bane of many people's 100% completion of Devil May Cry 3. These cheeky fuckers jump all over the place and always let you down about one second before victory. I decided to take this into my own hands and eliminate as much random element as I possibly could. By killing three of the four enemies, I can narrow it down to focusing on just one. By jumping off the inside shoulder, I can always get him to spin in circles and never jump or swing his weapon. It requires a bit of precision, but it's way, way more consistent than just praying that you get it by jumping in the corner. Having actually tested most of the secret missions ahead of time, this was going pretty smoothly, until I got to mission 8. There was a problem. The secret mission has a cheese that requires Trickster to be equipped, and I forgot to equip it at the start of the mission. Problem is, if you don't equip it at the start, you can only equip it at a shop. And the only shop is behind a one-way door that won't let you back to where the mission starts and where the secret mission is. I didn't actually know this when doing my first attempts, and I didn't think to just restart the mission. So this was the death of my first attempt. Oh, fuck. I forgot about the secret mission. I was supposed to equip Trickster. All right, that's, that's the first reset. I fucking forgot. Warmed up and ready for my next attempt, I started playing like absolute trash. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. No. We can't fall into this habit, chat. Can't let me reset like that. Devil May Cry 3 is a game notorious for its extreme levels of difficulty. As you can see, the enemies are extremely aggressive and will not stop attacking you. You know, I should just do all of my speedruns on the very first attempt, because I always play better on my first attempt. Who the fuck needs to warm up? Just immediately jump into it and just play. I always play better that way. Like, I swear, 
I'm just gonna reset my life away now. Or rather, my expectations for myself were so high that I couldn't live up to them, and that set me on a downward spiral that not even Amp Limit could commentate over. After the game completely broke and gave me a good laugh, I was good and ready to get going once again. Her scythe is like omega long. Is the hit range longer? I don't think so. I think it's just a visual, but I think like, Sometimes texture stretches happen like that, but I've never seen it happen on a weapon. What the fuck was that? I was staying strong and having a lot of fun with the extra boss fights and secret missions. The run was a lot more slow paced than normal any percent, but required a vastly different set of skills. A good example of this is Secret Mission 6. This secret mission is definitely supposed to be done with Air Raid from Nivon, but that's like 20,000 orbs and I'm a cheap bastard. So I spent like two hours trying to figure out how to do it without Air Raid. And it turns out, that you can. It's just really hard. If you're in double trigger with rebellion and jump and hold the lock on button, you slowly glide while losing height over time. With near perfect movement, you can collect all of the orbs completing the secret mission without buying air raid. Really hard though. What you can't avoid, however, is needing to buy air hike. It's required for this secret mission as well as a few blue orb fragments throughout the run. And it's also required for the final secret mission on mission 18. Because of this, the orb route is a lot tighter than normal any percent and to make up for it, I collected a lot more orbs. This was all stuff that I had prepared before doing my first attempt though. If I hadn't, this probably would have been about five hours long. The extra Jester 2 fight was fun, but mostly exactly what you would expect it to be. Over a minute of straight jump canceling. I discovered later on that it's actually better to use Agni and Rudra to jump cancel here. Secret Mission 9 proved to be the hardest in the whole game, and for a very dumb reason. It has these gondolas that fly past you and you need to shoot at them to kill all the enemies before they can escape. If you do, then you beat the secret mission. Overall, it takes about a minute, but if you mess up, you have to go from the start all over again. It's a huge time loss. The first time I ever tried it, I used Spiral and Royal Guard to shoot really fast, making it rather easy. Or so I thought. I did it first try on my first attempt, but on other runs, I lost over 5 minutes here to slightly mistiming my shots. You can get extremely trolled on this secret mission if you aren't absolutely perfect, and I didn't want to mash Ebony and Ivory because my poor hands just can't take it anymore. The final few secret missions were a ton of fun. I found out that you don't need level 2 Trickster to beat the final secret mission, just Air Hike and level 1, and the second to last could be a real show of skill. if. I had any. The hardest thing in the whole speedrun, however, turned out to be this last combat adjudicator in mission 18. Again, I did it relatively fast on my first attempt, but I lost over 10 minutes in subsequent attempts. I just could not be stylish enough, even when switching to Swordmaster to get the extra move. I could buy an extra move, but I was afraid I wouldn't be able to afford the Holy Waters for Arkham. And as you may know, we definitely want Holy Waters for Arkham. I simply was too smooth brained to figure this out myself, so I asked Chad for help. And well, this is what I got. Don't ask me. But it does work. Thanks to this, it is now completely consistent without having to buy any extra moves. The final challenge is one last blue orb fragment. In mission 18, there's a boss rush that you normally only have to fight enough bosses to make a complete circuit on this board. But for the blue orb fragment, you have to fight every single boss. It's a super fun boss rush that requires a bit of tactical thinking to do quickly. I actually learned something new about this. After the first four or so bosses, they actually get slightly harder, pushed up to about the hard difficulty. This only matters for the fights that have weird gimmicks like Doppelganger, as it takes more hits to unleash the lights that make him weaker. Heading into the final missions, I finished the game for the first time in just under two hours. Super slow, but the next few days would see me optimizing it much further, all the way down to a 1 hour and 37 minute time, even if I did miss a blue orb fragment, making it technically not a complete run. I feel like I missed a blue orb fragment or something, because shouldn't that complete the blue orbs? Tell me I missed this one, because that would be funny, and it would be really easy uh, to fix if I just didn't grab this one. No, I grabbed it. Is it the one in 11? Did I grab the one on 11? Like the one up on the, the things on, on 11? That might have been that one I skipped. This one right here. Yeah, I just leave. <laughs> That's funny. The run was super fun, and I hope I can get more people into this category in the future. The limitations of the original Devil May Cry 3 make routing around combat adjudicators and secret missions super interesting, and the boss fights make the game a total blast. Maybe if we get enough people running the category, we can get it under an hour and a half, and maybe even make it an official category. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Stay stylish.